Um, so the next part of this reaction is to add some sulfuric acid to this. Uh, so I'm going to measure out 15 milliliters of sulfuric acid, and then I'm going to add it to this solution. So I'm going to remove the waste. This is going to go into a larger waste container. Now we are back. I have my 15 milliliters of sulfuric acid solution here in my graduated cylinder. I'm going to add it to um, my beaker, and we're going to stir that around. Again, I'm still doing all these reactions inside the hood. Okay, so I'm just gonna stir this up until I see a change. So here we have dissolved that copper to oxide, that black solid um, with the sulfuric acid. And now we have a blue solution. So if I see any black particles around the sides of my beaker, I can kind of tilt it, kind of rinse those back in to make sure that those um, also react with our sulfuric acid. I wouldn't worry too much about that. Um, if you see some larger clumps, you can go ahead and do that. But if you miss some of it, that's fine. Again, remember that you can account for some error in transfer or it's just not reacting because it's stuck to the side of the beaker. Okay, so now we have another blue solution. It looks similar to the one that we started with. Um, but thinking about what our reactants were, what reactions we are going through in the procedure, uh, you should know that this blue solution is copper to sulfate. Uh, and then we're going to do the last reaction, um, which actually has a side reaction too. Um, so the last reaction is a redox reaction between um, copper to sulfate and zinc. Um, so in my hood, in this little weigh dish, I have measure out about two grams of zinc. So I'm gonna add this to the solution. Um, so when we add this, the zinc is also going to react with uh, any unreacted sulfuric acid that I might have in my beaker. Uh, and that's going to produce hydrogen gas. Um, so when we see that reaction bubbling, that gas that's being formed is hydrogen gas because there is a side reaction. Um, your report sheet asks you how you know this but the procedure and the reactions given to you give you no indication that there is a side reaction. Um, so I am telling you that there is a side reaction um, that happens along with this redox reaction. It's also a redox reaction as well, um, but we have kind of two reactions going on here at the same time. Uh, between the copper two sulfate, this blue solution, and zinc, and then also any unreacted sulfuric acid and zinc. That's the one that produces hydrogen gas. The reaction that between our copper to sulfate and the zinc will produce copper. Um, so we started with copper. We want to go through several different reactions and get back to copper. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and add the zinc and then we'll stir that up. And in my solution, I have bubbles. They're pretty fine bubbles. of our beaker here, it's kind of turning brown. That is the copper that is forming. So I'm going to stir this up until the reaction subsides, and then we will transfer um, our copper to a, an, an evaporating dish. The first question in your lab book is asking you about um, what is the limiting reactant? Um, so it's talking about this particular reaction. So your two options for the limiting reactant are copper two sulfate, a blue solution, and the zinc. Um, so make sure that you think about how you can decide what is your limiting reactant. Uh, and that's going to be by observation. It's not going to be by calculations this time for that first question in your report sheet. Um, you can answer what's the limiting reactant. Uh, so remember the limiting reactant is completely consumed in your reaction. So what would it look like if copper two sulfate is completely consumed? What would it look like if zinc was completely consumed? So I'm still seeing bubbles coming out of this reaction, so it hasn't subsided yet. So I'm going to keep on uh, stirring this. Once this reaction has subsided, and I really think that all that, that gas and all the copper that's going to form has been made, 
um, we'll decant this into the acidic waste container and then transfer our copper, which you should be able to see pretty well now, um, to an evaporating dish and dry that. The book does suggest heating this up to help this reaction, so I'm gonna put this back on the hot plate and stir it. In my experience, I haven't had a lot of success using the hot plate to get this reaction to go, um, but it is in the procedure, so we'll do that. I think the reaction is gone as much as it's going to go. So I'm gonna take it off the heat. It was just heating gently. So um, you can decide here, um, do we still have that blue color in solution? What is that evidence of? Do we still have a zinc in there? That may be a little harder to see since that copper kind of plates onto the outside of the zinc. Um, but to me, it looks like there is definitely still a blue tint to that solution. Um, so that should help you decide what is your limiting reactant. Remember that react. Remember that you're looking at the reaction between copper to sulfate and zinc to decide what the limiting reactant is. We're not worried about the limiting reactant of those previous reactions, specifically the copper to sulfate plus the zinc. Um, so I'm just going to let that settle. I have a couple of little tiny pieces of copper kind of floating around still in there. So I'm going to let that settle a minute and then I will decant it into the acidic waste container. While we are waiting for this to settle and cool off a little bit, um, we're going to go get the mass of an evaporating dish. So I have an evaporating dish and we'll go back to the balance to do that. Okay, always make sure that your balance is zeroed out before you add anything to it. And this is going to go into your report sheet, the mass of the evaporating dish, the mass of the empty evaporating dish, I'm not sure which one it says. Uh, the mass of this evaporating dish is 79.007 grams. 79.007 grams. We are ready to decant, so we wanna pour this liquid off of our copper, and so we're gonna do that into the acidic waste container. Uh, there is a larger waste container. I'm just going to do it into this beaker right for right now. Um, but again, it's the same process. I'm going to use my um, stirring rod to put into the spout of my beaker. And then just carefully pour off the liquid part. Doing it slow enough that I'm not going to pour out any of my solid. The solid now is the copper, so we want to make sure that we get that all the copper back that we can. So this is gonna go into the acidic waste container. Now is a good time to fish out the boiling stone, so that white piece that is in the beaker here, because uh, we don't need that anymore. So I wanna do that without, without getting as much copper as possible. Um, I don't wanna lose any of my copper at this step. So now we want to wash the copper with distilled water, and we're gonna kinda do two steps at once here. We're going to wash it with distilled water, and we're also gonna transfer it from our beaker to our pre-mast evaporating dish, okay? Um, so we'll do one last decanting step once all of our copper is decanted into this um, evaporating dish. Um, so what we wanna do here, this is going to accomplish washing it as well. I'm just gonna put a little bit of water in my beaker, and then I want to swirl it around so that all of the copper is kind of picked up into the water and I can very quickly dump it into my evaporating dish. Okay, so I'm kind of swirling it up so I can make sure that all the copper is up in that water and then I will very quickly dump it into the evaporating dish. And I'm gonna do this a couple of times to make sure that I get all as much copper out of my beaker as possible. It's going to be impossible to get all of the copper, but I think I got a good portion of the copper back into my evaporating dish. I'm gonna wash it one more time. Just try to get those last few pieces. Now in our evaporating dish, we have copper and water. Uh, we wanna get rid of most of this water before we try to dry it. 
we try to boil off that much water, it's going to take forever. But if we can pour off most of the water and then just dry the damp copper, that will work a lot better. Okay. Um, so this is also going to go into the acidic waste. And I'm going to decant it just like I did before. So we are losing some of that copper here because the copper is so fine, it's just kind of stuck in that water. Um, we could wait for a long time for it to separate more, um, but it looks like we have plenty of copper. We'll have a percent yield um, to calculate. Now in the evaporating dish, instead of water and copper, we have damp copper. So this is gonna be a lot easier to dry on the hot plate. Um, so you wanna be careful uh, to wash this so you don't burn the copper, um, but we're just gonna set this on the hot plate and let it dry. So this is our damp copper. We're going to let this heat up to get rid of as much water as possible, um, keeping an eye on it so we don't want that copper to burn. Then we'll take it off of the heat, let that cool, and take the mass of our evaporating dish plus the copper um, so that you can calculate how much copper was recovered and then your percent yield of copper. There's still a good deal of condensation around the side, so I'm gonna keep letting that heat up for a few more minutes, just kind of watching it so we don't burn that copper. Okay, our copper is probably about as dry as it's gonna get. Um, so we're gonna take this and put it on a piece of wire gauze again um, to let that cool so we don't break our glass layer, this porcelain. Um, but your report sheet does ask you about the appearance of this copper, um, so you can make your observations here. Um, it's kind of a brownish solid. It's pretty uniform. It looks all the same. Um, it doesn't look like the copper that we started with, but it's still copper. Um, it's just not in those shiny ringlets that we started with. Um, so I'll put this on the wire gauze to cool, and then we'll take it over to the balance once it's completely cooled off to get the mass of our evaporating dish and the copper. From that, you should be able to calculate the mass of your recovered copper and then the percent yield of the reaction. Our copper has now dried and cooled off in our evaporating dish, so we can take the mass of the evaporating dish plus the copper. So my balance is zeroed out. Close that door. And the mass of our copper plus the evaporating dish is 79.448, 79.448. So this should go on your report sheet. Now you can calculate the mass of your recovered copper and then also calculate the percent yield of, of our reactions today. Um, so your theoretical yield is going to be the same amount that you, we started with. That was the 0 0.550 grams of copper. So we started with copper, we took it through several different reactions, and then ended up with copper. And in a perfect world, we would get the exact same amount of copper back. Um, so you can calculate how much copper was recovered and then find the percent yield. Your actual yield is the amount of recovered copper.